We, yes, we used to have um, wrestling matches on, and one that sticks in my mind was um, it had Big Daddy in it, who was obviously very well known at the time, so there was lots of people wanting tickets, and they were told that they would be able to get tickets on the door. Unfortunately, the tickets sold out really quickly, and there was a lot more people than there were tickets, and they got very, very angry. <laughs> uh, that night, I was stewarding, and one other girl, who it was her first night, she'd never been there before, and the manager, the assistant manager that was there, was, was new as well. He, he hadn't, he'd only joined recently, and absolutely panicked. Uh, and so there was this girl and myself standing in the auditorium with our feet against the door, trying to hold the doors against the mob that was outside <laughs> until the police arrived. <laughs> so that was one, that was one memory. <laughs> so that's a good one. I remember the, I, I do, I can't remember which opera it was, um, but it involved a penniless hero surviving in an attic. Uh, he had a stove for which he couldn't afford fuel, uh, so he was keeping warm by burning torn up paper. Uh, I was watching in the auditorium that night and I wondered why they'd got smoke coming out of the top of the chimney because I thought, well, that wouldn't be seen in the room he was in. Uh, and then all of a sudden, two stagehands appeared, um, picked up the stove and carried it off the stage and the opera just carried on as if nothing had happened. Uh, and it turned out that the paper had, had lain on the electric bulb inside the stove and caught fire. <laughs> um, and another opera I remember was Carmen. Um, uh, it was on a couple of nights and the first night I, I saw it and there was a very beautiful uh, slim girl with dark curly hair playing Carmen and a tall handsome man playing Don Jose. Uh, and the next night I, I hadn't realised that the opera company's policy was to let everyone have a go at all the roles. And I was absolutely amazed to see an enormous woman playing Carmen and a very small man playing Don Jose. And when she sat on his knee, he disappeared and couldn't be seen at all. And at the end, where he shoots her and he, he then he has to catch her as she's dying, he almost dropped her. It's... Um, anything else that you do? <laughs> no, 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 go, go, go ahead. These, these okay. are good. These are good. Okay, well, like yeah, I'm just, just a very quick memory that I do remember Jethro coming as a support act to the Wurzels in the early days. <laughs> yes. Um, Ken Dodd, uh, the first time I ever I worked for him coming, um, the show had started and he'd gone on stage to introduce the support act. And I was out in the foyer preparing the coffee for the interval, and there was banging on the, on the outside doors. And when I looked, it was Ken Dodd. <laughs> He'd lost his way coming off the stage and had to go out in the street and come back in. <laughs> and I, I think from that, we must have had to shut the, we must have had the doors shut after, when a performance was on for him to have to not to come in, but, you know, suddenly, I suddenly remembered that. Um, so he came in and spent a lot of time with us, with all, all those of us that weren't lucky enough to see the show. We had our own little personal show, and he just made us laugh so much. Um, and gave, he gave us all signed photographs, uh, which I've still got, with happiness always written on it. <laughs> um, and there used to be a lady that came to all his shows and always sat in the front row and her name was Irene, and she apparently corresponded with him over the years, and, and so she would often talk to him in the middle of the show, <laughs> which I think, I'm not sure, he was very good with her, but I think sometimes, you know, it, it was a bit difficult. Um, but his shows, as, as you know, go on very, very late, and one night she stood up and announced that she'd got to go because she'd got to catch the last bus back to Ilfracombe. Um, so he sang Good Night Irene, especially for her. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah. Um, when the theatre was revamped in '94 uh, and then became the Queen's Theatre instead of the Queen's Hall, we had one of the shows we had was Little Shop of Horrors with Sue Pollard, and we all had an absolutely wonderful week with her because she was so friendly. 
every night after the show, we all went into the gallery bar and, and she'd be buying everyone drinks and anyone from the audience that was around, she'd invite them in and, you know, <laughs> and just entertain us because she was so funny. So we had a wonderful week that week. <laughs> um, and then when the theatre was a year old, we had an old-time music hall um, the Hiss and Boo Company put on for us. Um, we had Paul Shane and Ruth Maddock uh, starring in that. Uh, and we all dressed in costume for the whole week, um, which was, that, again, a really nice atmosphere and great fun. Um, another thing, uh, that I can't remember exactly when it was, but Princess Margaret, Margaret came. Um, and she wasn't supposed to go into the auditorium. That, they had the pantomime being rehearsed at the time, but she announced that she would like to go in. Uh, so they took her through, and she came through the doors just as Cinderella and Buttons were pretending to drive a coach to the ball. And as she walked through the door, they, they were waving and saying, Hello, common people! <laughs> that's very good, that's very good. That's about, that's where I got to. <laughs> so, where, so, so how did you get involved in the first place? Um, I just answered an advert for stewards, and... Um, got hooked really because <laughs> yes it's 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 great it's great fun and it's sociable and it's really nice and you see lots of things that you might not have gone to see you know so I found out I like all sorts of music and shows that I probably would never have even tried over the years that's it's been good <laughs> and if you if you're if you're trying to sort of explain the the um, the, the Queen's Theatre you know uh, or the uh, the twin theatres really sort of here I mean trying to explain to friends from the other parts of the country. What, what do you say about them? Do you say you know, these are, these are um, you know, quite sort of... Uh, how, how, how would you represent them? How would you, how would you tell someone who'd never been to the Queen's what it's like, I suppose? Um, difficult one, actually. <laughs> um, I, well, I think we're very lucky for a start to have a theatre you know, like that in, in an area like ours, in, in a fairly rural area so it's, it serves um, a, a large area and people come from Taunton and Tiverton and South Devon you know different all over the, the West Country so I think we're very lucky sometimes it would be nice if we had a few more seats so that we could you know perhaps have more stars if you like but, um, but I think we do very well um, okay and what, what do you think about the future of the theatre well, I hope it will continue to thrive. Um, as I say, I think we're so lucky that we need to think about how we can keep it. <laughs> okay. And and and, what would you like to see the theatre sort of doing to, to to do that? To sort of, you know, how would you like to see it in sixty years' time? What would, what would be your your fantasy theatre? <laughs> Any idea? Um, you might not have this. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to think, there was, there was talk of it expanding, I'd like to see that happen because I think, uh, I mean, we, we do need more dressing rooms and, and more space backstage and um, it would be nice, I don't think it's probably possible to have more seating where uh, the way it is at the moment. It would have been nice to think it could expand in that direction. Um, but certainly the backstage facilities would uh, could do with being updated and and enlarged. <laughs> you were just telling me about the, the, the spiritualist Yes, we used, we used, to, have, that, we used to have uh, mediums would come and do, and do a performance and um, say that they could see somebody's grandfather outside the pub or something and, and did anyone recognise the description and then we would go around with a microphone on a long lead and uh, you know for people to, to say that it was their grandfather or, or whatever. <laughs> and there were other events as well taking there was, place? Yeah, they had dances because they could clear all the, all the seating from the downstairs auditorium. Uh, so they had dances. Wedding receptions were held there um, and, um, and an antiques market every Friday for which all the seating had to be cleared out and then put back afterwards. So it was quite a job. <laughs>